Hey everyone, my name is Tetsuo or Tetsu. This is my first video slash podcast episode. What I'm about to read is a real life story about someone's experience with sleep paralysis. This story was posted in the Reddit community by MPZ1968. The story has been edited to remove identifying features or to fix the flow of the story. For those who do not know what sleep paralysis is or have never experienced it, in my own words, it is a phenomenon where you're trying to fall asleep or waking up from a deep sleep but are unable to move. Not only you are unable to move, but you can hear, feel, and see your surroundings vividly. Anyways, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to Tetsuo Tells a Story. You can find me on YouTube and podcast providers such as Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and more. So let's get on with the story by MPZ1968. I would like to share with you an experience I had about 10 years ago, give or take. I learned several years after this incident, what happened to me is what doctors called sleep paralysis. I say they're full of it. It really happened. First off, I do not use drugs outside of caffeine and nicotine. I do not drink alcohol of any sort. So this was not a hallucination caused by either of the two. Nor do I have any mental issues that I know of. Let's make that clear. So going back about a year before this incident, I was really into ghost hunting shows. I watched and recorded every and any show of a team of ghost hunters investigating haunted places. Some were really good and some just sucked. No disrespect. I remember watching this one show where the lead ghost hunter is a muscle bound jerk who don't like bullies, but in turn becomes one himself. He orders his crew around like he owns them, and they follow him blindly like sheep. I think you know the one. It's a good show. At least it used to be. Anyways, they were investigating a bar owned by an old country singer, located in one of the southern states. He wrote a semi-popular song about a girl, and everyone in the paranormal community says that this place is truly haunted. They were down in the basement, I think. I'm sorry. It's just that it has been a while since I've seen it. Uh, to this day, this is the only episode of the show that I will never watch again. In the episode, they were talking with some guy about what's going on. When in the top left corner of the screen, there was a shadow figure wearing a cowboy hat standing in the doorway. At this time in the show, they stopped the film and pointed out that when they were actually down there, they didn't see this figure and only discovered it while reviewing the footage. I was so naive back then and didn't really know much about the paranormal. I figured it's a TV show, what harm could it really do? But boy, was I wrong. I now know that ghosts, entities, or whatever you want to call them, can follow you home from places and are made up of energy and can travel through any energy source they want. And one did. Now that I've given you this backstory, let's proceed with the reason why I'm actually writing this. An old friend of mine who I met when we were kids playing baseball on the same team when I was 11 or 12, had recently bought a house and was looking for someone to give his old trailer home home to, which is where this incident happened. We had lost contact over the years, but unbeknownst to me, he had kept in contact with my father. My father gave him my phone number, he called me up, and made me an offer I couldn't refuse. A free trailer 
just pay lot rent. Oh heck yeah, I'll take it. The trailer was old and needed work, but it was a good idea. I moved in and did some minor repairs, and a couple weeks after that, I invited my father and stepmother over for dinner. My stepmother is what she calls an old soul. She can sense when things are not right with the universe. She took one look at the place and said, There is bad juju here. I don't like it. Every time she came to visit, she was nervous and she wouldn't sit still, always looking down the hallway. She eventually stopped coming. She said that it was too thick for her, whatever that meant. I just thought she was nuts. I now know that she's not. I've lived there for many years, had some strange things happen, seeing aberrations out of the corner of my eyes, voices, cold breezes, etc. I just chalked it up as bad lightning, outside noises, insulation issues, some rational explanation up until that night. The night that changed my whole belief system forever. The night I will never forget. I was laying in bed, asleep on my back like I always do, when I woke up and noticed a black figure standing in the hallway of my bedroom. The hallway light was on. I always leave it on in case I need to make a bathroom run late at night. The light from behind the figure showed it's, it had a head two arms, two legs, but no eyes. It was just standing there. I blinked a few times to make sure I wasn't seeing what I was seeing. Sure enough, I was. Only this time, when I looked at it, it was wearing a cowboy hat. The moment I realized that, I physically saw it jump from the standing position in the doorway over top of the bed and landed on top of me. My body became stiff, unable to move. All from my peripheral vision, I could see my wife laying next to me. I tried to scream, but nothing came out. I saw the figure sitting on top of me. It reached its hands down right into my chest and started squeezing my lungs, and I couldn't breathe. It was squeezing the life right out of me. There I was, gasping for air, paralyzed, and unable to make a sound. Just when I thought I was about to die, a series of intensely bright white light started flashing all around the room, like a strobe light on steroids. I closed my eyes to shield them from the light. It was that bright. All of a sudden, my body jerked a few times, like a convulsion, then stopped. I opened my eyes and it was gone. I was able to breathe again. I lay there, heavy breathing, for a good 20 minutes, too scared to move. When I finally got the nerve to try, I slowly moved my right hand over to my nightstand. Still shaking from fear, I grabbed my phone to check the time, like I always do when I wake up in the middle of the night. The time was 3.48 a.m., the witching hour. Needless to say, I did not go back to sleep that night. I cautiously got out of bed so not to wake up my wife and turn every, and turned on every light in the house. Needless to say, I did not go back to sleep that night. I cautiously got out of bed so not to wake up my wife and turned every light on in the house. Needless to say, I did not go back to sleep that night. I cautiously got out of bed so not to wake up my wife and I turned on every light in the house every single one including all the bedroom lights and how my wife stayed asleep I don't know but thankfully she did I made a pot of coffee grabbed my Bible and sat at the dining room table drinking coffee Bible in hand until the morning came I must have smoked at least a pack and a half of cigarettes in that three hour span of time. I asked my wife 
if she had seen or heard anything strange the night before. She said no, and I left it at that. I didn't tell her what happened, and I still haven't. She probably wouldn't believe me anyways. My wife and I stayed at the trailer for about two months after that. When we got the opportunity to rent an actual house, we took it. We packed all our things and moved out. On the last day that we were ever at that trailer, my wife had left the vacuum in the back room where this experience happened. She asked me if I would go get the vacuum and I agreed. Upon entering the room, a weird sense of dread fell over me. Something inside of me told me I needed to get out of there fast. I grabbed the vacuum, ran out the hallway and out the front door as fast as I could, slamming the door right behind me. I then turned around and yelled, You want this place? You can have it. I'm gone. My wife looked at me like I lost my mind. My father and stepmother helped us move along with some friends. My stepmother insisted that we drive all our vehicles that contain our belongings over bodies of water to block any of the bad juju from coming with us to the new house. Aside from really few bad dreams about the old trailer, we have not had any bad experiences in our new house. Well, that's my story. I really don't care if you believe me or not. I know for a fact it really happened. Thanks everyone for listening to this story by MPZ1968. If you enjoyed this story, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to Tetsuo Tells a Story. You can find me on YouTube and any of the podcast providers such as Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and more. Do you have a story to tell? Let me know so I can read it to the world. Thanks everyone. See you in the next one.